What's up guys, hope everyone's doing well, uh, gearing up for the holidays and hopefully some late season hunting as well. Uh, I know I'm pretty pumped up as our gun seasons in Iowa just finished up so I can actually get back into the woods with archery equipment. So I will be hunting for the first time in a couple weeks uh, this afternoon. Um, I'll talk a little bit about my strategy for the late season here in just a little bit. But first, I've had a few requests for this video. I uh, figured I'd talk about what's in my pack and uh, just kind of how I pack everything, especially as a guy that films hunts, self-filming especially. Um, so I just figure I'd run through that. Um, some of these products are companies that I work with, and if that's the case, I will, and I have a discount code for you guys to use. I'll include that in the description. Other products are just ones that I like and use, uh, but I'll, I'll try to link those as well. So uh, starting with the pack itself, I have two versions sitting here, uh, the Mystery Ranch Treehouse. So this is a smaller version, the, uh, the 20, and then I also have the 38, which is the bigger one here that has all my stuff in it. I end up going with the 38 just because of the filming. Um, I just have enough equipment to justify the bigger size. Uh, with batteries and lenses and cameras, all that type of stuff. Uh, I think for most guys though, this 20 size is about perfect. Um, and this is the best whitetail pack that I've used to date. Um, just the, the features of it, the quality, the amount of pockets and the location of pockets and how it, how it operates uh, has been awesome. So I'll kind of run through that real quick. Uh, like I said, I went with the bigger size. This is the 38. Uh, that has all my stuff in it ready to go for this afternoon. Um, one of the, my favorite things about it is this top pocket here. Um, and it's the same on both of these packs, both sizes. Uh, they share some of the same features. But this easy attaching top, you know, you have the buckles, you can secure it down good. Um, but for quick access, it's got an easy little hook here. And this top pocket, very soft, but it's accessible from both sides, which for me is really nice. You know, if it's closed up, I need to grab something from the outside. It's got the top zipper here. Um, but same thing, if you're up in the tree and you have it hanging, you have it open, you can access the same pocket from the inside, uh, which is huge. So on my pack, what I have in that pocket, well, first of all, on the outside, you know, everything's, especially when you're self-filming and by yourself, uh, convenience and quick access is definitely the key um, so you'll see kind of how I have things located it's it's all about quick access first of all on the on the very outside one of the first things I do is hang my pack up and so I have a screw in hook uh, attached to this outside zipper uh, this is a little hawk hanger comes with the carabiner uh, conveniently though I left the hook in the tree on my last hunt so I need to go grab that but um, I keep that hawk hanger uh, on the outside as the first thing I grab when I get up in the tree. Um, in that pocket itself, you know, again, my, my first easy access stuff that I need to grab in a hurry. Um, grunt call, range finder, uh, wind detector, wind puffer, some earth cover scent. Uh, I've got these little stick holders for elevate sticks when I'm doing uh, the hanging hunts. I can pull those off my waist and an extra clip for my second angle, my GoPro. So all that stuff is, uh, that's what's included in that first top pack, um, their first top pocket, excuse me. Uh, then just right on the inside, there's also another little zippered pack. This is where I keep all my <coughs> camera accessories, so batteries, extra SD cards, um, extra base plates and then also I keep a few little snacks in here some mountain ops bars and uh, hydrate sticks um, so that, that stuff stays in that top pocket also on the inside of this pack sitting at the top you know it's just structured enough with these side walls but you also have these little uh, cinchable pockets on the inside that sit so that whatever you have in there doesn't fall to the bottom of the pack and that's where I put both my camera, I, I throw my camera that I'm filming with on one side and I throw my extra lens in the other pocket. So those are at the top of my pack, they don't fall to the bottom, they're easy to access. Um, 
down into the main compartment of the pack, uh, down the bottom, I always try to keep an extendable pull saw and a regular hand saw, an extra pull up rope, and I'll talk more about that in just a second, and a spare release. Um, so those go in the main compartment, but not always what I need to access right away. So it's, it's fine for those to kind of be at the bottom of my stuff. You know, sometimes I'll throw an extra jacket or layer over the top. Also on the inside, there is one pocket here way at the back. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's kind of towards the bottom inside of the pack. Um, and that's kind of where I keep my kill stuff, if you want to call it that. So I have um, some rubber gloves, all my tags, and my knife. And if you are looking for some last minute Christmas gifts, this would be a, a sweet one. This, this knife is awesome. It's called the Day 6 Dragonfly, and it's a dual blade knife. Uh, so you have obviously the one out here, but there's another one built into the handle. Um, there's an Allen wrench built into the sheath. So if you're out in the field and need to, you, this one's getting dull, you need to swap it out. Just two little Allen bolts here, you swap the blade and you're good to keep cutting. So really, really well designed knife, super lightweight. Um, there's no movement to the blade or anything. Um, so definitely check that out if, if you're in the market or, or looking to get a Christmas gift for somebody. Um, but that's what all I keep in that pocket is just tags, knife, and rubber gloves. Moving to the outside of the pack, um, you see there's an outside pocket here, one main uh, deep pocket, and then on the sides there's, there's matching pockets on each side. So there's a, a bottom one and a top one, same thing on the other sides. Um, so grabbing my pack here, on one side I have the Elevate Capture Camera Arm and the strap for it on the top pocket. Um, so obviously I, I don't want that inside my pack. It's one of the first things I put up when I'm set up in the tree, camera and everything goes first. So um, setting up that, easy to access on the outside. It's deep enough pocket that it holds it nice. Um, and again, easy to grab when I need it. Looking at the other side, this top pocket, I just keep a couple of um, scents in here. So if I'm going by a scrape that I want to freshen up or if I need to use um, some deer scents on the hunt itself, I uh, keep those in that top pocket. The bottom pocket here is just uh, my bow hanger. So the extendable hawk bow hanger along with one extra hawk hanger if I need it. So keep those on the outside again for easy access and there's so they're not getting caught on stuff inside the pack. On the front here, I mentioned that, that deep pocket. Um, on the outside here, I, I use this, it's called the hunting hoist. I believe it's from uh, uh, Doyle's Deer Gear. Um, I don't have any affiliation, but I'll provide a link to that. Works nice, because um, I'll, I'll pull either carry this on my on my back as I go up the tree, or I'll use that pull-up rope, and but I'll attach this to my bow. So even when the pack is coming up, this is unwinding, uh, you know, staying with my bow at the bottom of the ground, then I just gotta grab this and pull it up. It's better than using two separate pull-up ropes, or obviously way better than making two trips up and down the tree. Uh, so I keep that on the outside. I only keep two things in this main pocket. One, my binos, and then two, a headlamp if I need it um, going in the mornings or out at night. Uh, so both of those are easy to access on this outside pack. Um, and that's pretty much all I carry to the tree as far as in my pack. Um, you know, during the time of the year where I'm taking rattling antlers, these cinchable straps are really nice for that. One on each side here for each antler. That's one thing I've struggled with over the years is finding a good way to pack rattling antlers, real rattling antlers, and I like to take good size ones. Um, so this pack has worked really well as far as that goes. So um, that's a look at the, the tree house pack from Mystery Ranch and, and everything I have in it. All right, looking forward to the lay season. Like I said, the gun season just got out. I'm gonna be out here in a couple hours, but um, I'm gonna be spending the next couple days getting out, pulling cars, trying to figure out what deer survived, moving cameras around, that type of stuff. Um, the gun seasons obviously are, are tough around here. A lot of pressure, a lot of people in the woods. Yeah, increased range, all that type of stuff. I do know of at least a few casualties 
And for whatever reason this year, I had more big four-year-olds than usual, which is good and bad. Uh, it's not good for the gun season. And a few of those got killed. And obviously now that they're dead, I don't mind sharing them. Um, the first one is a deer that, if you were watching some of my early season hunts, he's a deer that I, that I pass in early October. Just a really cool deer, awesome brow, some junk. Um, he got killed uh, during the gun season. Um, this other one, just a big frame, pretty deer. Would have been cool to see what he turned into at five, uh, but he got killed within the last week. And uh, the one I was probably most looking forward to seeing make it to five, uh, just a giant frame. I actually had a really hard time figuring out what deer he was. Um, and I finally found him. He made a huge jump from three to four, uh, but he also got killed within the last week. So uh, unfortunately, some good four-year-olds went down, but that's uh, it's part of the game. It's how it goes. And I do know of at least one or two that made it. Um, but... It's also still late muzzleloader season, and you know those younger deer, even four-year-olds, they're just they're a different animal than than mature deer. So they, you know, a lot of a lot of daylight movement and all that. So they're not out of the clear yet, but making it past the main Iowa shotgun seasons as a, is at least a start. Uh, as far as deer that made it, like I said, I'm gonna get out and uh, do some trail cam work to try to find some more targets. I do think that really big body deer that I've been chasing on the ground with my recurve made it. So I will likely be hunting him this afternoon um, and hopefully be able to get back on him and and end the, end the quest for my first recurve buck. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, strategy wise, of course, food is king this time of year. Uh, but I will say this is a little bit of an odd year, at least so far because of the warm weather and lack of snow. Um, it, you know, it can be kind of a catch-22 for the guys that don't have a bunch of standing grain, big plots. Um, you're not out of the game because there's a ton of food sources right now available to the deer with with no snow or cold weather. You know, your green plots, it, um, picked egg fields, you know, picked bean fields, picked corn fields, heck, even acorns um, are still a legitimate food source right now. So. Um, that's the good good side of it. The bad side of it is the deer can be pretty spread out and not as concentrated. So um, my my strategy is probably going to be focusing on some green food here for a while while it's still pretty warm. Um, but I'm going to just kind of monitor what the deer are hitting as well. Um, obviously, from a weapon standpoint, I'll be bow hunting you know until the end um, and recurve hunting when I can. So. I'm just excited to finally get to hunt again. It's been a long two, two and a half weeks uh, not being able to be in the woods. So uh, excited to be back out there and uh, good luck to you guys that still have a tag. Hopefully I'll be posting another video prior to Christmas, but if not, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Uh, hope it's a great one with, with friends and family and I, I truly appreciate all the support all year long.